music to the ears of the hungry. The sizzle of a mouth-watering hamburger. Fresh, lean beef, done to a golden brown, couched in a soft bun, and garnished with garnish to the ears of the hungry. The sizzle of a mouth-watering hamburger. Hey everybody, welcome to Android Vision, brought to you by the Intestinal Fortitude Podcast Network. Thank you so much for watching Android Vision. Um, I really don't know what month this is in because you just decided to come to fucking town. Yeah, I just kind of magically appeared. You I did. Nowhere. And this chick's like, hey, knocked on the trailer door and was like, um, we're gonna record some episodes. Like, Where the fuck have you been? You should avoid the northeast corner of the property. There's really? the portal there. And you got transported, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now you're living on a farm? Mm-hmm. In the middle of nowhere. And how is that for you? Great. Is it? You know, nobody complains about strange smells or, you know, loud noises. Oh, the Not me. Oh, that's just, <laughs> yeah, that's just so funny. Your strange smells, you know, uh, got you. Um, and so now you're raising chickens? Yeah, chickens and, and demons. And demons. There Demon you go. chickens. Demon chickens? Yeah. There you have it. So, well, we're glad to have you here. We're going to have you for a couple episodes. I'm really excited. <laughs> Um, so, Sam, everybody, let's Hi. just give her a round of applause. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you know, uh, we have a Jackula's back. Fuck you. Yeah, he's back. He decided he was going to come and come again. And again. And again. I came for the monkey. Well, I thought you just came. I thought you just came to come. On the monkey. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a, uh, a special episode with Sam, and uh, we're gonna have some really shocking episodes, um, and it, they're gonna be a lot of fun. Um, and I don't know if these episodes are gonna be like a double header. I haven't decided yet, but we'll figure it out as we go. We're winging it. We're winging it definitely tonight. So again, thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, but we're we're gonna do a, a nice PSA. Um, and this PSA that we're doing is it's 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 a 1944 PSA, and it comes it's brought to you by the United States Information Services Company or whatever I don't know they're just some governmental fucking agency or some shit like that. But uh, this is all about prenatal and postnatal. Yeah, postnatal yeah. infant care and feeding. Uh, it's an educational video. So basically, you are what your kid is what you eat. I guess. Yeah. So yeah, if I eat, you know, whatever. Whatever. If you ate a lot, if you ate a lot of, if you ate a lot of dick while you're pregnant, would is your kid gonna be a dick? Hopefully not, but I guess they'd get a lot of protein. <laughs> Next question though, does uh, because we're in the this weird you know time in the United States, does a cum load who is that has been that has been um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not castrated, but... Vasectomy? Vasectomated? Vasectomated, yeah. Does that load have less calories? Yes. Diet sperm? Sperm diet? Diet sperm. Yeah? Probably. I see. You think Fuck yeah, Probably. Well, the swimmers I think we would, have to, we'd ha we would have to determine if it's the sperm with the calories or if it's the other stuff that the I forget semen. what it's called. Semen. Yeah, dude. But isn't semen like the sperm and the and the the semen is the stuff? vehicle for the sperm? Okay. So basically, it's been a while since, like, so your ghost car biology. Yeah. It's like <laughs> or your ghost biking it. Remember when you were a little kid and you ride your bike and then you ghost bike it? That's what your sperm loads are after you have a vasectomy. Nobody's on the bike. The no, there's no egg. There's no yellow in the egg. Just that's what it is. 
You're still no shooting. yellow in the egg. It's just all all that white runny shit. No, you're still shooting ropes, but there's no fucking uh, swimmers in there. Yeah, no yolk in the egg. More information than everybody. But it's not like an egg, it's not like an egg white situation where you're getting rid of the yolk, because if that you is could, where all the power is, brother. That's what I heard. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, it's all about making a baby and uh, rearing that baby up. So enjoy the PSA, and uh, we'll be right back. story is about a family, a strong and sturdy family, a family blessed with alert, active, growing children. Father and mother both are proud of their five healthy children. Number one, John. Number two, Mary. Three, Peter. Four, Joe. And number five, little... Wait a minute, where's little number five? Hey, you're not number five. Where is little number five? Oh, we forgot to tell you. Little number five hasn't been born yet. That's the point. Our whole story is about little number five and how his mother is preparing for him. In fact, when she knew little number five was on his way, her first step was to visit the clinic. At the clinic, the doctor examines her to be sure she's in good condition to have the baby. And then he points out that there are three critical periods in a baby's early life when food is of vital importance. The first of these is before he is born, when he's forming. The second is when he is nursing. The third is the period of weaning, the time at which he changes from liquid to solid food. Now then, let's see how this mother prepares for little number five during the first period. She knows that he will have nothing to grow on except the food that she eats for him. She really is eating for two people, herself and little number five. It's just as if the food on her table goes directly to her baby. She must eat the foods that have the elements of growth in them. For instance, milk is a food of growth. If you cannot keep a cow, goat's milk is just as good. The milk you drink, of course, must be pure. If ever there is any doubt, it can be purified by boiling it. The husband helps plan for little number five by growing lots of vegetables. It takes only a little ground and a few minutes' work each day to grow fine tomatoes, string beans and carrots, beets and their greens, and other green things such as lettuce and chard. These simple foods make a great difference in the forming of a baby. They contain the minerals that will build strong, well-formed bones. So the mother eats at least one of these fresh vegetables every day. In addition, she eats eggs often. They are especially beneficial to little number five. And so are fresh meats of all kinds, and poultry such as turkey and chicken, and fish of all varieties. She also eats plenty of fresh fruit, bananas, oranges, guavas, papayas, figs, or any other fruit as it comes in season, just as long as it's fresh. At last, the day comes when little number five is ready to come into the world, and so he does. He is born at full nine months, not prematurely. Instead of being underweight, he's strong and healthy. And why? Because his mother ate the proper foods that nourished him before he was born. 
Now we are ready for the next period the doctor spoke about, the period of nursing. Once again, it's as though the mother's food went directly to her baby's stomach. Her food, in effect, is his food. So as the baby grows, she will need to eat even more of the good foods that will nourish him. Fresh milk, fresh eggs, meat, vegetables, and fruits. Having given little number five a fine start in life, the mother wants to guard him against the deadly diseases that attack infants. So she takes him to the clinic. There the doctor protects the baby against smallpox by means of a simple, harmless vaccination. In some countries, such as the United States, the lives of thousands of babies are saved each year by vaccination. At home, the mother is very careful to keep little number five clean. She keeps his crib and bedding fresh and clean. She puts netting over his crib to protect him from mosquitoes and flies. She understands that often there are sicknesses in the filth that flies walk in, evil and deadly sicknesses, such as typhoid fever and dysentery. A good netting helps keep these evil diseases from reaching her little number five. In between nursing times, she gives him water to drink, but first she boils it. Boiling kills any sicknesses that might be in it. After it cools, it's pure and safe for him. So born strong, kept clean and safe from disease, and breastfed with milk that's good because his mother eats the right food, little number five thrives and grows. Now we come to the most important single event in any baby's life, the day he has fed his first solid food. Of course, all solid foods must be mashed since he has no teeth to chew them. A ripe mashed banana is one of the best solid foods to start him on. It is soft, easily digested, and nourishing. Fresh eggs, when soft boiled, are easy to digest. And a little later, he may have green beans, or peas, or carrots. All of these things, of course, must be well cooked and thoroughly mashed. Eventually, he may eat all of the foods his mother ate for him in the beginning. Fresh milk, fresh fruits, vegetables, eggs, and cereals. Cereals are especially good for little number five. When thoroughly cooked and soft, such things as rice, ground corn, wheat, or barley will help make him grow. Always before fixing any foods for her baby, the mother washes her hands to make them clean. These are all simple things this mother does, Anyone can do them. Yet as simple a thing as boiling a baby's drinking water can mean the difference between sickness and health, even the difference between life and death. This mother has done her job well. She ate the right foods before little number five was born. She nursed him properly. And she weaned him wisely. Her reward is a healthy baby, a little number five who proudly takes his place with the others, a sturdy member of a sturdy family. guys I hope you enjoyed that PSA it's all about baby number five right and uh, making a strong baby for a strong family yeah that's what they say so basically they're making a baby to work on a farm and um, do lots of them work on my farm do you need more babies I mean if they're gonna work 
I'm, I'm not your man. I hope you are. He's packing heat. Oh. But I'm but I'm not your man. I don't have any. I mean, I could ask permission, but I don't have any. I mean, I don't want to have the babies. Oh, you just don't. Could just like give you babies only if they're gonna go like just the indentured servitude for exactly. the first 18 years of their life. There you have it. That's. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this, this PSA was really fun because it all talks about, you know, breastfeeding the baby. You are what you eat. So if you drink a lot of beer, would you maybe get drunk? Yeah. Yeah? Actually, yeah. Wow. Interesting. interesting. Very interesting. If you smoke crack, would you maybe get high? Yeah. Yeah? Probably. Probably. Weed? Maybe? Probably. Maybe? They get it all off. <laughs> Fuck yeah. All goes. Yeah. My mom, I wish my mom was a drug addict when I was a baby. I'd just start getting high when I was an infant. It would have been fucking great. But, um, all right, guys. So, time for a movie uh, 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 about a baby that wasn't made so well. Well, he's at least the backdrop. And so, uh, we're doing 1984's Combat Shock, guys. Uh, it's written and directed uh, by uh, Buddy Giovinzano. Nice Italian boy from New York. Stab my own. And uh, it's written, directed, produced by this gentleman, and uh, his, it's starring his brother Ricky. Oh. Same last name, and Veronica, Veronica Stork or Strock or Stork. 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 Yeah. Sorry. And so, uh, what? Well, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh, fuck shit. Well, somebody... tell your fucking wife what you're doing, bro. I told you already. She knows where you're at. No, that was my. Oh, it's okay. So, um, yeah, he interrupted the student show because his, this is what happens when you fuck. Ah. <laughs> so, this is what happens when you fuck your ass. Uh, you better go take that call. She's looking for you. Uh, so, yeah, we start. Speaking of combat shock, you're going to give me some fucking. Yeah, combat <laughs> Fucking shrapnel over here, huh? Jesus Christ. It definitely was. So, we follow the story of uh, Frankie. He's an unemployed Vietnam vet struggling to just to life. Uh, years after the war, 15 years after the war, he's, he's struggling. And uh, I just stabbed myself with a fucking something. Anyways, um, yeah, it's we're walking around the trailer with no shoes on tonight, guys. It's a fucking it's a deadly trailer. It's not a heroin <laughs> needle, I hope, because now I have AIDS. It's all right. I, but I already had it, though. I should be good if I get it twice, right? I stay away from that. I got it just to try and lose a few pounds. Yeah. Can you guys, do you know, can you get AIDS twice? If you get cured from it for the first time? I don't really think you get cured from it. I think you just uh, deal with the symptoms. Oh. For the rest of your life. What about HIV? Mm, I'm not sure. Pretty sure there's not a cure for that yet either. Yeah. We're close. You're just stuck with We're it. Close. Maybe yeah. you just get. Unless you're Magic Johnson. <laughs> well, you'd have to be Magic Johnson to survive it. This is true. All right. Well, back to explaining the story. So, Frankie, he's an unemployed Vietnam vet living in the fucking slums of Staten Island. Uh, mix in his nagging wife, his deformed kid. Oh God. Yes, his deformed baby. Agent Orange. And, yes, and his junky friends and drug dealers that want, want him to work for them. And, uh, and he's just not adjusting well to all of this. Yeah, he's not adjusting it well. Sounds like it would be difficult to yes. adjust to. He's surrounded by crime and the grid of Staten Island, and uh, he begins using, losing grip on his sanity. He kind of talks to himself a lot in this movie. This is a weird one for us, guys. I'm not going to lie. Um, there's a lot of talking in it, but I feel like it's like street trash, but not, I don't know. There's, there's some really shocking moments in this movie. We're going to talk about them after the movie's over. But um, I've been wanting to show this movie on Android Vision for a while, and I expect to have some. What are you? Yeah. You're all right. I'm great. I expect to have some people maybe tap out of this one. I hope not because I will tell you there are scenes of suicide in this, and there are scenes of uh, children, uh, little babies, uh, being put in uh, ovens. Yeah, it happens. You know, people lose their grip. <laughs> people lose their grip on reality. And, you know, it just happens. So. Yeah, enjoy Combat Shock, guys, um, and uh, we'll be back after the movie. Oh. Yeah! <laughs>